Hi, I'm Elise from My Cupcake Addiction and today I'll be showing you how to make these adorable little dragon cupcakes using either fondant or modelling chocolate. The things that you'll need for today's tutorial, I've got a couple of knives and a sharp knife, I've got a fondant roller, an edible marker and a toothpick, a small circle cutter, just a piping tip but I'm really only using the end of that today so you can also use a pen lid or something like that, some corn flour and a shaker. You can either use fondant or modelling chocolate for this as I mentioned and I have recipes for both on my channel My Cupcake Addiction so I will leave links to those in the description box below. I've gone with purple, black and white and I do slightly prefer modelling chocolate for this just because there's quite a bit on it and the taste of modelling chocolate for me is a little bit nicer than fondant. I've got a large circle cutter, a paintbrush, some plain tap water, just a little bit of ganache and of course a cupcake to frost today. So let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to just frost up your cupcake. So I'm using a bit of ganache today, but you can use absolutely any frosting you like. And it's just going to be sort of a bit of a rough mound of frosting on the top. So I'm just going to use the back of my knife just to scoop that on. Try not to get it over the edges of your cupcake case if you can avoid it. So you can see there I scraped down towards the cupcake case, but try not to actually go over the cupcake case. And don't make this dome too tall. You can see there, just something like that. And it doesn't have to be too neat. Take out a little bit of your modelling chocolate or fondant now and we're just going to roll that out. Not too, too thin here, but you also don't want it too thick because there's a lot going on on top of this cupcake. Alright, now out of this, and you can see roughly the thickness that I've gone with there, I'm just going to cut a scalloped circle. So this is just a scone cutter, but it gives me that nice little scalloped edge. Cut that out, give it a little shake around so that you get a nice neat edge on it. You can just sit that off to the side. Now roll your fondant just a little bit thinner here because you want this to be just a fraction thinner. We'll go with that side and then I'm going to take my sharp knife and I'm just going to cut out a couple of triangles for our little wings. The wings you really want to do in advance, you can see here I've got a couple that I'm actually going to be showing you how to stick on but you want to let those dry before you try to stick them on. So I'll be cutting these today but I probably won't stick them on for a couple of hours so that they're stiff enough to be able to stand upright like on our little black dragon. Taking your small circle cutter, just cut just a couple of little just to make them look a little bit more dragony so they're not so triangle. And then just using the back of your knife, and I'm using the back because it's gonna give me a nicer cut than the sharp, sharp front. Come from the center point out to the little pointed tip of those little ridges in the wings, just to give them a little bit of detail. Really simple. Now take your little fondant dome, and we're just gonna put this over the top of the cupcake. So the size that I chose is about a size bigger than the top of my cupcake. I'll leave dimensions to mine in the description box below, but this is gonna vary depending on the size cupcake that you've baked. So now I just wanna use my fingers, and I'm actually stretching that fondant down. I don't want a really, really nice, neat, finished dome here. I actually want to push it down so that it's overhanging around the outskirts of my cupcake. Perfect, something like that is totally perfect. Now, you wanna take your little piping tip, and I'm just using this for a scale effect today. And just really quickly, don't spend too much time here, just go around the edges with just one sort of a side or edge of your piping tip and just add in a bit of a scale detail. So your cupcake should be looking something like this. You can see that sort of just a really, really light little scaled pattern in the top there. All right, now for the fondant or the modelling chocolate, I start off with about a golf ball sized piece of either fondant or modelling chocolate and then just tear it in half. So one half of that's going to be your head and the other half's going to be your body or your tail of your dragon. Starting with the tail, you just want to roll it into just a really easy sort of a sausage, but you want it to be fatter at one end and then nice and pointed at the other, just like a tail. Perfect. So there's my dragon's tail and I'm just going to position that on my cupcake just to see how long it is. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. I'll just cut off just the end so that it's nice and neat. A little bit of water on the back all the way down that dragon tail and just curl that tail around the front. Perfect. Once you've got your little tail all curled around the front, you can use the knife, just the front of the knife, and we're just gonna come around and just give it some little indentations, just for a bit of texture for the outside of that tail. A lot of what we do in fondant modeling is just really, really basic shapes and really basic tools to make textures, but it's the combination of those shapes and those textures that really make your cupcake stand out. Perfect. Now you wanna take your other piece of, for me, purple, and we're just gonna roll that into a nice seamless ball. Now once you've got your nice neat ball, just rock it in the palm of your hand because what you want is like an elongated kind of a strawberry shape. Once you've got that shape, I found it easiest just to use my two fingers and I'm just lightly pinching to give me that kind of bridge of the nose type shape. You want that to go all the way to the top of the head from sort of the top of the nose there. Now, working quite quickly because if you're using fondant particularly, it will start to dry out and if you're using modeling chocolate, it will start to melt. So you wanna just pinch up with your finger, kinda of like two little ear looking shapes. 
And then we're going to use our knife and just cut each of those into three. So just one, two little incisions so that you've got three little kind of pieces to each ear. And then just use your finger just to pull them out and sort of flatten them and separate them from each other a little bit. Something like that. Now you don't want them to be too fat at the bottom so just pinch them in a little bit and then fan them back out. And just even off if you've got any little divots or anything like that. Make sure that you're constantly keeping the shape of that head. Using your, I'm using just the lid of my marker now, so you can use anything, a small circle cutter or just something that's going to give you a small indentation. You just want to make two relatively small eye holes on either side of the bridge of that nose. The front of your knife is going to be used just to give him a little bit of detail down the bridge of the nose, like so. And then we're going to use the toothpick just to hollow him out a couple of nostrils. So they kind of look like a bit of a comma shape and they're quite long and quite deep. Now that dragon head is ready to affix. So just carefully so as not to lose your shape, turn him upside down, a little bit of water on the bottom of the head and we're going to position his head sitting up on this tail. So this is actually going to raise the head up for us and you kind of want it roughly about the same distance as the end of the tail there. So you can see he's right on the end of the tail but that tail's fully supporting the head. Perfect. So I'm using a bit of black to make just some little spots along the inside of the tail. Just roll little tiny balls and then press them out to make little dots and a tiny little bit of water on the back to stick them onto kind of the inside edge of that tail. Make these spots all different sizes and shapes because you don't want them all to be the same size and shape. You want them to look like they're kind of like little natural dragon spots. All right, so we're nearly done with our little dragon. Now we just want to do his little horns and also his eyes. So for the little horns, you want to make sure that you roll out two little similar sized balls before you make the horns. So take your two balls, you can see that they're quite similar sized and just taper them off so they're kind of like little carrots. And then I just use my knife once again just for a little tiny bit of texture on the front of them. A tiny little bit of water down and not too much water here, just on either side of those little kind of flappy bits that we made and use that to stick those horns down. Beautiful. Now you want to take your white fondant and we're just going to use the tiniest little bit of white fondant here. So once again you want to roll both of these little tiny balls out together so they're the same size for his eyes. But we're talking a tiny little bit. A little bit of water and really not much water at all into those little eye sockets. And then you just want to take your little ball of white fondant and just push it in. Perfect. Now your eyes are what you can make your dragon a little bit friendlier and cartoony looking or a little bit meaner. So I'm just going to go with a pretty friendly dragon today and just give him two little tiny dots. And you can also use your black fondant for this, but I like the edible markers. They're a little bit easier. Beautiful. There's your friendly little dragon. So to make him look a little bit more scary, just take once again another tiny, tiny little ball of that fondant and roll it into like a little bit of a teardrop shape or a little bit of a cone shape. And then just put a little bit of water on the back of it. And with the pointy end facing in, you just want to pop it over top of his little eye there. Use your toothpick just to position it so that it's kind of mean and angry, not like surprised and shocked, like so. So you can see the difference there between the nice little wide open eye and then the little sort of a mean angry eye. Beautiful. Now lastly I said that I would show you how to stick those wings on. So these wings here are going to go just on the back there and you can get the general idea for our little finished dragon. But because I know these green ones have been setting and they're a little bit firmer, I'm going to show you how to stick them onto our green dragon. It's going to be just a little bit of water once again. We're going to just apply some water to our first wing just on the end here, on the very, very point and not too much. But then you also want to put some right along the bottom edge and just keep your paintbrush handy because we want to sort of stick it down to anywhere that it's going to touch our surface at the back of the dragon. So I'm going to attach the main focus point there, as you can see. And then if I turn it around, you'll see that bottom edge that I've put the water on. I can just kind of tuck it in so that it's almost attaching a little bit to that cupcake topper and just hold it. You might need to hold it for about 10 seconds because we're attaching dry fondant to dry fondant. You need to give it about 10-20 seconds for that water to start eating into the fondant to give it a bit of stick. Once you're happy that first wing there is sticking on nicely, we want to just do the same to our second wing. Perfect. So that's your little fondant dragon. You can see him there with the wings. You can see him without in a bunch of different colours. I hope you guys have loved this tutorial. If you're into dragons, make sure that you check out my Game of Thrones Dragon Egg tutorial, which I'll link to in the description box below. As always, thanks very much for tuning in to My Cupcake Addiction.